So electromagnetic spectrum, all the electromagnetic waves, the waves which can transfer the energy and uh, travel with the same speed in vacuum does not require a medium. They all are transverse. So you have to learn in A levels, you have to learn the order of the wavelength as well as the frequency along with their names. So we have radio wave, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-ray and gamma. Uh, the wavelength, this is the longest wavelength and this is the shortest wavelength and this is a shorter frequency and this will have the highest frequency. Then the wavelength order you have to learn that it's from uh, 10 power 0 means 10 power 0 means like if I write 3 into 10 power 0 it means 10 power anything raised to power 0 is 1 so it means 3 into 1 or that is equals to 3. So they have a wavelength from 10 power 0 to 10 power 3. Then for microwave that is 10 power minus 12. They also have a range. Then for infrared, minus 4 to minus 6. Generally, microwave is minus 2. Then for visible light, visible means the light which we can see that is from 700 nanometer or 7 into 700 uh, into 10 power minus 9 to 400 10 power minus 9. And that is, you can say blue, but that is in reality it's violet ultraviolet 10 power minus 10 x-rays 10 power minus 12 and for gamma minus 12 to minus 16 these are their wavelengths the order of the wavelength you have to learn this and order of the frequency 3 exponent uh, exponent 3 to 6 exponent 10 12 to 14 14 is there 10 power 16 18 and 20 to 24 so these are the frequency range for radio waves and what are their uses application radio waves are used for communication land communication uh, microwaves are used for terrestrial uh, the sky communication such as like wi-fi satellite communication infrared is used in bluetooth or remote controls visible light if you want to examine observe anything we use visible ultraviolet it can be used to for sterilizing kill bacteria or for vitamin d synthesis X-rays are used in medical images or finding the cracks in the bone and gamma can be used for treatment of a cancer or radiotherapy. So these are some uses of these electromagnetic radiations. This is the same thing. Electromagnetic waves, they are all are transverse and This whole family is known as electromagnetic spectrum, which include radio, micro, infra, visible, ultra, X-ray, and gamma. But the only part which our eye is sensitive, that is a visible. We cannot see ultraviolet, X-ray, or gamma. We cannot see infrared, micro, or radio. That's the only part of the spectrum for which our eye is sensitive. Then understand how the diffraction experiment provide the evidence for wave nature of electron and be able to use the de Broglie's equation, which is lambda is equals to h over p. Look, what is the concept of electron? Di diffraction means diffraction is a property of the wave. Like when the wave passing through a gap, say this is a gap, and gap can be a narrow gap or it can be a wider gap. If the wavelength is longer or equal, then we call that a narrow gap. If wavelength is shorter, we call then the gap size, we call that as a wider. So what happened when the wave passing through, these are the wave front, so the wave spread out. So spreading of the wave around the edges or through the gap, this spreading of the wave is known as diffraction. Like a lot of waves are traveling, but we don't draw the waves. What we draw, we draw the wave fronts. Wave fronts are the lines representing the identical points of the wave. So the wave will spread and this spreading of the wave what we call we call that as diffraction. So electron we know electron is a particle. So example if we place a lattice or a crystal and 
there is an electron which is accelerated and moving towards the sample because electron is a particle so how we should observe like how we should get the what should be the result either the electron should pass straight or electron should deviate from the path or electron might bounce back these should be the, these are the possibilities as we know electron is a particle so as electron is a particle either it should go straight undefectedly or it deviate from the path or it bounce back but in reality this does not ha happen what we observe we observe that when we pass this electron when we pass this electron through a sample of a crystal we observe that electron behave like a wave or diffraction happen so electron is a particle but when we passes through the gap when we passes through the crystal it appear that electron give a diffraction pattern rather than for the particle of a pattern uh, pattern of the particle so it means that this electron is behaving like a wave so electron is a particle but it is behaving like a wave and what we call this we call that as wave particle duality so what is the meaning of wave particle duality it means that the if something is a particle it can behave like a wave and something is a wave it can behave like a particle and this is known as the wave particle duality so evidence of wave particle duality how we are sure that the particle is behaving like a wave later we'll discuss the wave can behave like a particle in photoelectric effect but right now the particle is behaving like a wave and how we conclude that we conclude by using this electron diffraction that electron should diffracted when it passes through the sample rather than if it was a particle it should either pass straight bounce back or deviate but it does not happen it diffracted or give a diffraction pattern so the formula which can relate the wavelength and the speed at which the electron is moving so lambda the wavelength of a wave is equals to h divided by momentum which is mv m is a mass of electron which is constant v is the speed at which the electron is moving so if electron if we increase the speed so the wavelength which is associated with the electron that will decrease like example electron can be a wave electron can be a particle so if we if two electrons are there one electron is moving slower and the other electron is moving faster so the one which is moving faster means it's having a high speed and the one which is moving slower will have a lower speed so the one it's having a higher speed moving faster so the if it, this electron behave like a wave that wave will have a shorter wavelength but electron which is moving slower the wave that will be longer wavelength so the wavelength which is associated with the electron can change depending on the speed at which the electron is moving and what about this h this h is known as the planck's constant this is a constant value so this is a fixed or a constant value so the formula which relate the wavelength and the momentum of the particle wavelength of a wave and the momentum of particle is lambda equal h divided by p or lambda is equals to h divided by mv so if the particle is moving faster it will have a shorter wavelength if particle is moving slower it will have a longer wavelength so when we pass the electron through the crystal what pattern we observe you can see this is a pattern we observe if electron was a particle then what should happen either this is what we see on the screen so if electron was only a particle when we are passing that the, either the electron should pass straight so we'll get this this pattern like the what is there at the center or it might deviate from the path at a certain angle and it might bounce back so 
we should not get these many spots if electron was behaving like a if this electron was behaving like a wave uh, like a particle so not too many spots should be there like specific region we will have the spots So this is this is what we should get when if the electron is acting like a particle that mostly it passes through and deviate and bounce back but this is not what we observe what we observe we observe pattern there that electron spread in a particular manner so it is like a diffraction or it give a wave property and same thing here that this is giving a diffraction pattern so this result this Electron diffraction is a phenomenon of resulting from interaction between electron and the crystal material and producing a pattern of a ring or spot that characterizes the sample or shows how the particles are arranged in the sample. So this shows, this is evidence that of a wave particle duality, it means a particle can behave like a wave and how we can relate the wave associated with a particle that lambda is equals to h divided by p or h divided by m v, where v is the speed at which the particle is moving. Is it clear about the electron diffraction and the wave particle duality, the concept? So in, so in this case, this diffraction shows that electron is actually behaving like a wave. Electron is not behaving like a particle because same thing happened same type of pattern we observe when the light waves when the light waves passes through a gap same diffraction pattern observe like diffraction occur and leads to interference so we'll see different spots bright and dark fringes are there lines are there so same electron is giving which gives an idea that electron is not acting like a particle it is acting like a wave So pulse echo detection or echolocation, the pulse echo technique is used to find or detect the position of an object like the bat is sending the pulse. And then these pulse are received back. So using the pulses, it can determine what is the distance between the source and the object. And the second thing it can also identify that whether this the change in the frequency can be used to determine whether a prey is moving away from the source or uh, towards the source and did using a shorter pulse more detailed image can be obtained uh, using a higher frequency or lower wavelength so less diffraction otherwise what happened when the bat is emitting out these pulses so if it is a longer wavelength, longer wavelength diffract more. So as a result, these, this will diffract. Instead of reflection, it diffracts, spread out. But because using a shorter wavelength or higher frequency, so when it hit, major, most of the radiation will bounce back. So a pulse is sent to the object and the time interval between the moment the device sent out and the pulse moment and receiving the pulse and if the velocity of a wave is known the distance between the center and the obstacle can be decided and this is called echolocation and bat uses this method to see its surrounding environment at night and radar uses this method to locate the airplanes as well so how amount of detail in a scan may be limited by the wavelength of a radiation or duration of the pulse like when we send the pulse, we can send a longer pulse, like greater duration for the pulse, we can send shorter pulse. Shorter in terms of time interval, not the wavelength, like in terms of time interval, we are changing the pulse. So sound waves with a frequency from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz can be detected by the human being and that is in an audible range. So sound with a frequency above 20,000, that's called ultrasound. And these waves are used in variety of application in medic medical scanning also and the most familiar 
is used to identify because they are not harmful for human body so it can be used to uh, for a medical examination as well then how ultrasound image is created so the ultrasound imaging relies on the fact like it's a wave is sent and the wave bounces back so there will be a partial reflection of the sound wave and different in the densities if any boundary is there so this type of like basically what happen say this is an object sending the pulse so if we are sending a pulse of 2 cm so once it completed 2 cm it bounces back part of the pulse then 2 cm so we'll get more detail image if we use a shorter pulse or we use a shorter wavelength so ultrasound transmitted by the device also act as a detector and it can measure with knowledge of the wave speed a computer can calculate the depth within the body where the reflection occur and build up an image which shows the feature of different depths how wavelength affects the detail so shorter wavelength of a wave less diffraction is there therefore they and uh, they undergo so therefore shorter wavelength of a sound Uh, less of a wave spread out when it travel this means shorter wavelength can map the tissues uh, easily and ultrasound also uses short pulses usually like because if you use a longer pulse this prevent a reflection from a nearby or uh, interfaces from uh, reaching the transducer before the pulse has finished so the gap between each pulse must be quite long usually about 1 millisecond to make sure that the reflected pulse and the pulse which receive should not mix with each other so short, uh, shorter wavelength will give a more detail image as it is less diffracted then social and ethical issues that need to be considered when developing or trial new medical techniques so what is the like in terms of safety it will cause so example x-ray could solve the medical problem but uh, it can damage the cell so long term exposure of the x-ray can cause a cancer an ultrasound scan can be used for many medical examinations and in terms of uh, cost the mri scan magnetic resonance imaging which is scanner produce much clearer image than the ultrasound and it is safer then x ray but it is more expensive so mri magnetic resonance imaging it is expensive but it give a more detail image so these are some uh, uses of these ultrasound for echolocation uh, echolocation or identifying the distance between the source and the reflecting surface